Hey, what's up? Uwe Lillas here, founder and sole photographer of Nordic Landscape and Crealeo Design. Today I will give you part one of how I prepare for aurora hunting. By the way, I don't like the term aurora hunting because you cannot really hunt the aurora down. Uh, if you can't see it where you are, there's no point really in driving half an hour and thinking um, maybe it will be there instead. It doesn't work like that because the, the aurora is so high up that um, moving 50 kilometers or so won't make much difference. However, you could go searching for a hole in the cloud cover if it's a cloudy day when you are uh, about to see the northern lights and you think they are active above the clouds. I have made a free checklist with seven things you can try uh, if you're facing that situation. Check the link below and download it for free. But if you have a clear sky and you still don't see anything, the only thing you can do is just waiting for it, at least if there's a good chance for it to appear, which is the topic of today's video. So let's jump right into it. Part one of preparations, checking the aurora forecast. Just like there are weather forecasts, there are also uh, aurora forecasts. Google it and you will find them. Uh, there are websites and apps that can help you with this. I'll put some links uh, in the description to this video if you're watching on YouTube. And if you're watching on my blog, I'll put the links here in my blog too. There are three types of forecasts. It's the 27 day forecast, it's the three day forecast, and it's the one hour forecast. I will try to explain what these forecasts are based on and how you can use them. First, you need to know that the Aurora Borealis or the Northern Lights it's the same thing, appear when uh, particles from the sun, also called plasma, are thrown out into space. This happens constantly, but more so from something we call coronal holes and sunspots. That's why aurora forecasts are connected to what's happening on the surface of the sun. Why is it 27 days? Well, it takes about 27 days for the sun to rotate around its own axis. Sunspots that are pointing towards us and giving us more auroral activity will do so in approximately 27 days. The 27 day forecast is a rough estimation because sunspots may have grown or they may have shrunk. Some sunspots may have disappeared, others may have appeared during that 27 day rotation time. And then there are other events on the sun's surface that may give, give us auroral activity. Events that you can't really predict. So when the 27 day forecast predicts a low activity, there might still be some auroral activity due to these other events. So please take the 27 day forecast as a very rough estimation. Let's move on to the three day forecast which is a lot more accurate, although not 100% reliable. This forecast is based on current observations of the sun. When the sun has thrown out particles into space, this can be observed and it takes roughly three days for those particles to travel through space from the sun to earth. And then we come right into the one hour forecast. There is a satellite called Discover, which is located 1.5 million kilometers away from the Earth. That is four times further away than the Moon. When particles from the Sun pass by that satellite, it takes then about one hour for the part particles to reach Earth. The data is measured by that satellite and gives you a one hour forecast. So this is not estimated but actually measured. It's debatable whether you can call uh, this a forecast since the time span is so short, you know, one hour. But it gives you a very good idea about what's happening in the moment right now or in the very near future. But this is where you need to understand some of the numbers and the different indexes in your Aurora app or the website that you're checking. Let's go through the most important of these. Uh, I will not go 
into everything here because I'll try to make it simple. The KP is a nine grade scale which gives you an idea of what's going on. The higher the better and anything from, from four up is really good. Uh, but there is a problem with the KP. The KP is an uh, average of the activity during the last three hours. That means that the KP can sometimes be low and you see the northern lights. I have seen the northern lights at KP1. It's not uncommon at all. And sometimes the KP can be high and you don't see any auroras on the night sky. So in order to evaluate the current situation, you need to look at other indexes than the KP. Let's look at the magnetic field index. That one is impossible to predict. It can change dramatically uh, in just minutes. So that is why waiting is a good idea if the KP is high and you see no northern lights on the night sky. The magnetic field index is measured in BZ and the simple rule here is the lower the better, but it has to be below zero. I remember one night when I was waiting for the northern lights and I was specifically waiting for the BZ to drop and it never did. That's a risk you take when you go out on an aurora safari. So the KP and the BZ is something that people seem to look at uh, when looking for the northern lights and that's fine, you can do it. But here is a personal formula uh, that I use and that works pretty well and it's very simple. If you use Space Weather Live, either as an app or you go into their website, there is something there called hemispheric power. When that number rises above, let's say, 25 or 30, uh, the chances are increasing. And you only need to look at the upper part of that scale because that refers to the northern hemisphere, the north part of the, the Earth. Not the southern lights, the northern lights. Okay, so again, when that rises above 25 at least, uh, the chances are increasing. And then you can look at the BZ. Uh, the hemispheric power is, is a better tool than the KP because the hemispheric power is actually measured in the moment. It says what's happening right now on Earth. While the KP, as I said, was an average from the past three hours. So look at the hemispheric power. If it rises, check the BZ. If that drops below zero, then look at the night sky. I even uh, use another tool that is, is very good if you are in the Nordic countries, Scandinavia, Iceland, Sweden, Norway, Finland, to see the northern lights. I use the Kiruna magnetometer. At the bottom of the app and the website you have something called magnetometers and I click the Kirana magnetometer because it's very simple and when that index drops below let's say minus 100 it can go as far as minus 700 uh, you can almost be certain to see the northern lights. So when hemispheric power rises I always check the Kirana magnetometer. One more thing about the magnetometer, it reacts very quickly to what's happening. That means you have to act before the magnetometer reacts. You cannot sit at home or in your house or in your hotel or whether, wherever you are waiting for the magnetometer to fall and when it falls you get dressed and go out. You, it's, it's almost like you have to be on location. You have to be out already when you see the magnetometer fall. But it's a good way of seeing the, the action happening. So if I wait in my car, I always keep a, an eye on the magnetometer and, and see what it does. Sometimes it's very straight, then nothing happens. Sometimes it starts to go like this, up and down, up and down a little more. That means there is some uh, magnetic disturbance in the air. Sometimes it rises and quite often when it rises it will sooner or later drop. So when it rises that's when I when I head out uh, and when I'm out I'm waiting for it to drop.
and as soon as it drops I know well now now is the action but if you're not in Europe you're in let's say Alaska or Canada uh, you cannot use the Kiruna magnetometer because uh, it's on the right wrong side of the earth so then I would su suggest you use the hemispheric power when it rises check the BZ when that drops or, or is on the zero side the chances are pretty good that's my formula it's simple and it works not always there are so many factors involved in the northern lights but but it works pretty well well that's it uh, you'll find all the links below here check, please check them out and um, there are other websites you can go to there are many apps you can use but this is these are the ones that I use mainly the space with alive and please download my free ebook northern light stories it's a book filled with northern lights photos and stories about the real stories true stories about the situations when i took those photos uh, and it gives you an insight to what it's like to be a northern lights photographer on the southern edge of where no northern lights can be seen I live in Western Finland, on the west coast of Finland, in Nykarlebi, which is pretty far south to be an aurora photographer. But it works because I've, I've become an expert of, of uh, reading these forecasts. Uh, so please check that out. You can download it for free. The link is here below. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye bye.